On December 17, 2011, Tropical Storm Sendong pummeled the city of Cagayan de Oro. As we well know, these types of storms are common in the Philippines, and most of the time, the country is able to take them in stride. And so that evening, unsuspecting residents went to bed as they did any other night. Hours later, they woke to a terrorizing torrent of water, logs, and other debris as a flash flood ravaged the town. Some were able to make their way to rooftops, wake up their neighbors, and help one another. Many were not so lucky. More than 1,400 residents perished in that flash flood. Though we can't stop the forces of nature, we know that the impact of natural disasters can be mitigated. Overlogging around Cagayan de Oro resulted in significant deforestation. Trees could have reduced the impact of rising water levels, but the trees were gone. In addition, had building codes been enforced, there would have been no houses built alongside the riverbank. It was these residents who were hit hardest. Whole families were swept away in the middle of the night, and sadly, most of those who died were women and children. USAID and the U.S. military were the first among international donors to provide relief assistance to the displaced survivors. Typical presentations about USAID provide an overview of our program here from 32,000 feet. To review, our country strategy, whose goal is to promote inclusive growth in the Philippines, has three components. The Partnership for Growth, which supports national level and local initiatives to address the binding constraints to growth, such as weak governance, lack of fiscal space, and weak human capacity. Fostering peace and security in Mindanao, which aims to improve local governance and strengthen civic action in six conflict areas in Mindanao, and improving environmental resilience, which aims to improve the Philippines' ability to manage its natural resources and mitigate the impact of global climate change. This presentation will show briefly how these three objectives play out at the beneficiary level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show as we present USAID in Cagayan de Oro, 2011 and beyond. After the Partnership for Growth was launched at the end of 2011, we selected three pilot cities to focus our local level assistance. We wanted to see if taking a whole of USAID approach to program implementation would make a difference in stimulating inclusive growth in those cities. We also wanted to test our hypothesis that secondary cities can serve as engines of growth for the peri-urban and rural areas around them. We call this our Cities Development Initiative. And which city do you think we selected as the first to participate in our Cities Development Initiative? Right, Cagayan de Oro, the city that was devastated by Tropical Storm Sindang. Since then, CDO has emerged from being the victim of a natural disaster to being the National Competitiveness Council's number one most competitive city in the Philippines last year. Our presence in Cagayan de Oro displays the full cycle of USAID's work, from disaster relief to disaster recovery. And now to development. Let me show you what happened to a fictional family in Cagayan de Oro after our disaster relief and recovery were completed. This is the Dela Cruz family. They live here, in a small barangay inside Cagayan de Oro. Because of USAID's focus on promoting economic growth in secondary cities like CDO, opportunities and access to basic services have greatly improved in areas such as this. Access to basic services includes clean and reliable water and reliable power supply. Take their house, for example. The power it receives from the grid is a combination of clean and renewable energy from many hydro and solar panels. This is the father, Meng Wan. He's smiling ear to ear because... He just finished registering his small restaurant business. 
as a result of USAID's program to assist the local government of Cagayan de Oro to streamline its business startup processes, Meng Wan was able to register his startup company in less than a day. This process used to take at least 15 days. This streamlined process is what earned CDO the distinction of being the most competitive city in the Philippines. Meng Wan capitalized his business with a loan which he was able to obtain as a result of USAID's work on land titling. Having a title allowed him to use his family's land as collateral for the loan. Other entrepreneurs in Cagayan de Oro have received USAID guaranteed loans from banks like the Bank of the Philippine Islands that are participating in our small and medium enterprise loan guarantee program. Last year, Meng Wan was infected with TB, but because of USAID's TB project, he was diagnosed early and received proper treatment. The Philippines has one of the highest TB infection rates in the world. TB is fatal when not treated properly. This is the mother, Aling Maria. She has been working at a USAID-supported health clinic as a barangay health worker for five years. She is holding her mobile phone because she just paid off all of her family's bills, including their property taxes, through her mobile money account, a program that USAID pioneered and brought to scale in the Philippines. As a health worker, Aling Maria also uses her mobile phone to send text messages to pregnant mothers in their barangay to remind them to go for their prenatal checkups. Notice that the Dela Cruz family has just two children. This is because Mang Wan and Aling Maria participated in USAID's family planning program. This is Rose. She is an engineering undergrad at Xavier University in CDO. She dreams of starting an IT business in Mindanao someday. Rose is a top student who aspires to receive a USAID-funded scholarship for a master's degree at a U.S. university after she graduates. And finally, here's Johnny. He's 12 years old and recently won a national reading contest in English. He credits his third grade teacher who worked intensively with him when he was a struggling reader. His teacher, by the way, received USAID-funded training in effective reading strategies. The Dela Cruz family is flourishing and full of hope, and they have big plans for the future. During the last election, the people of CDO, remembering fully the devastation caused by Sundong, and now realizing the importance of good governance, voted their old mayor out of office. Under a new mayor, the city now enforces proper land use and zoning laws, has launched reforestation projects, and is implementing disaster preparedness measures. The city government is working closely with its residents, with civil society, and with the private sector to be a truly climate resilient and business friendly city. We hope to see socioeconomic opportunities spread far beyond Manila and be in every secondary city in the Philippines. Today, 62% of the Philippines' growth is generated in only three areas, Metro Manila, Central Luzon, and Calabarzon. USAID's objective is to see every city, including the typhoon-ravaged Tacloban, generate the social and economic opportunities that became available to the Dela Cruz family. When this happens, we can say that our goal of promoting inclusive growth will have been achieved.